Welcome back to the Nairman campaign of Bridge, where in the previous part we went on a rampage against King Mulu and pretty much took him down. There was a brief break when I went away to put down our rebellious vassal, Lady Zhu Rong. That went fine. We also took down Liu Yan, a neighboring Han Chinese faction. That was pretty easy. Then we killed Mulu some more and actually finished unifying the Nanman tribe. So we're now the official king and we need something new to do. And in the very next turn, stuff begins because the faction to our east at our south corner here, Shi Xie, decides to declare war on us. I had the option there to make it a so-called alliance war, meaning that basically Yang Feng will help. I think Yang Feng might have already been at war with Shi Xie. But this actually matters, this alliance war thing, because it turns out I don't understand it, and it is different to a normal war, as we shall see. For now, Shisha already has a full stack army in our territory, because it was just walking around and I wasn't paying attention to it. So now we're under threat, I'm going to get King Mulu to start making a new army at our capital to deal with that. Meanwhile, our two armies in the northwest are going to carry on with my original plan, that is to set up on Liu Biao's border and just invade him after a few turns once everything's in position. Meanwhile, Shisha unfortunately takes the first one that he comes across, not much we can do there. So this is inconvenient, it's going to be up to King Mulu and the new army I'll make with him to do something about this. We can also strike at Shisha's territory because while his army is very far away in our core region, we can move our southern force to sneak in and attack his core region, so that's handy. Then at the start of the next turn we see that Sun Tzu has vassalized Shi Xie, and this is going to impact my strategy in a very negative way actually. Because what I thought would happen here is because we're not at war with Sun Tzu, now that Shi Xie has been vassalized, we're technically not at war with him. And there does seem to be some distinction, he's a pink faction rather than a red faction. I thought that meant that they were a faction that could be called into a war with you, that, but weren't. Like they were in a coalition with someone who is at war with you, or maybe they're at war with uh, someone who's allied to you, something like that. Perhaps the war with Yang Feng's still going. Anyway, for whatever reason, I decided that we're not at war with Shi Xie anymore, and that's why Mulu there is moving away from the Shi Xie front and my southern army as well. I thought, well, I'll go after Liu Biao, and in the south, I'll go after this little faction in the corner, I think it was called Chu Ban, there's a guy right at the bottom of the map. So we're now ignoring Shi Xie officially, and his armies are going to be still walking around in my territory. I really didn't suspect a thing, well, I suspected a little thing. I thought this was fine. All because of that pink colour. I kept thinking, well, red is at war, so pink must be something else. And the long story short on this, as we'll soon see, pink means they're in an alliance war with you, which is different to a normal war, in that they don't end in the same circumstances where normal wars do, one of those being them being vassalized by a faction you're not at war with. So while under normal rules we actually wouldn't be at war with Shishu anymore, a thing never actually popped up saying we weren't. You can see my suspicions here bring me to the diplomacy screen, where I checked who they were at war with. They're only at war with Wu Tugu, or so it seems. So I thought, oh, they're just walking through my territory to get to the other side. I guess that's all right, I'll just ignore them. But back on that screen, there was something I missed, because it's possible for a faction to be at war with other factions, and for it to not say that they are in their at-war list due to this mysterious alliance war mechanic. We'll come back to that in a bit because I investigated it further. For now, we're carrying on our setup. We're going to have to take out some yellow turbans by the looks of it, because the yellow turbans are slowly conquering Liu Biao for some reason. So I thought, well, we'll just declare war on the yellow turbans as well and do a simultaneous attack against them and Liu Biao. We go ahead with the declaration and immediately attack this walled settlement. I'm pretty sure with the auto-resolve results of walled settlements, you need to have at least one siege thing so that it thinks you can get inside easily. So while it says we'll have a Pyrrhic victory there, I thought we'll just make a ram and that will sort things out. With Liu Biao, I figured I should be able to declare war on him through my ally and maybe get something out of all this. But for whatever reason, I couldn't find out how to do it. Maybe you just can't in this game. I can't join my ally's wars or offer to help or anything. So we're going to do this the usual way. 
First though, we need to help out Liu Biao a little bit by clearing up this yellow turban siege on one of his cities. The auto resolve actually went surprisingly badly given our advantage, we lost about the same amount as them. We've captured two officers, but we can't use them. They also have nothing for us to steal if we kill them, so I thought well I'll let them live then instead. Pretty much the criteria there. And off they go. So with that done, we can now restart a siege, this time with us doing the besieging. And it looks like lots of people are quite happy to see us attacking Liu Biao, he's clearly made a few enemies. This auto resolves also pretty bad, especially with our balance bar advantage, it clearly is taking the walls into account in some way. So we'll leave that place under siege. One thing we can actually do right off the bat is take this element right here in Bashi because while it was defended by an enemy army up until this point, that army has walked off handily, so we declared war at the right time. In we move, that's going to do a little bit to help out with our economic woes. We need to take some more territory right now to be able to afford King Mulu's army. Another territory I had in mind was that one I mentioned earlier, Chupan, I think I said Chupan, whatever. This guy, the guy in the corner. It's kind of hard to get down there because there's a river on the border, so it takes many turns to walk the short distance there, but our southern army will get on that. Meanwhile, we'll just keep going with Shamoka, no sign of any enemy army, so we'll walk over towards the next one. And with the sieges we've left, I thought maybe that now it's been a turn, we could come back to these and just auto-resolve them. The balance bar's really good, as you can see. But it's still saying we'll only get a Pyrrhic victory, so I was put off by that. I thought maybe it's not actually going to give us a Pyrrhic victory, but I decided not to check. I could have saved and auto-resolved to find out, but I didn't feel like I was in any hurry to actually do either of the sieges. So I thought, well, I'll just wait. Let's just not save scum and stuff like that. That's nice. But we're actually at war with Shishu, as you might have inferred. So here's me discovering that for sure, as he takes my capital completely unopposed, and I was just like, well, that's not very nice of you, what gives? Before we can find out what gives, the yellow turbans do sally against Mulu and get themselves killed to some extent, so that will make that siege easier. Now then, we're going to have to go straight back to the diplomacy screen and look over who we're at war with. You can see how careful I'm being now. I'm like, right, double check. All these flags, are any of them? <laughs> she sure. And while none of them are, the very eagle-eyed among you will see the second list at the top there of other people we're at war with. We're at war version 2 with someone else, and that white flag happens to be she sure. It's not that I would have known, even if I'd noticed it, because I don't really remember what the flags are. Here I check Sun Tzu, who is she sure's vassal lord. Obviously, if we were at war with him, that would explain things, but we're not. Then I check Shi Shu's war list, he's not at war with us on that list either, just at war with a bunch of other people. So very confusing, then I check the peace deal list, we can't get a peace deal with Shi Shu, so that's suspicious. While we are at war with him, war 2.0 doesn't allow peace, which is a bit suspicious, we'll come back to that as well later on. So all I can do is turn around. I wanted to immediately auto-resolve the survivors of the yellow turbans, but the prediction there was still pretty bad, which was suspicious. And over here at Bar, you can see the enemy army inside this place is basically dead. We have like 10 times their troops, but it predicts a Pyrrhic victory. I was very suspicious of that as well. I was just like, what is going on? There is one thing, again, that we can do this turn right away, and that is to do the same thing we did in the uh, previous turn, or two turns ago now. That is Yushamaka to get a free victory with an auto resolve against Liu Biao. I was starting to think, well, let's just get out of this war with Liu Biao if we can, because we're losing our core, core region, our economy is just out of the window as a result. We don't really want to waste too much time on Liu Biao, we probably need to start walking back to the middle of our territory. However, we obviously want to finish this siege first, so because of that I was inspired to finally just click the auto-resolve. We did take enormous casualties, so I'm guessing this auto-resolve actually does take into account the kills that towers will get. You might have seen there the enemy units barely got any kills on us, but we lost plenty of troops. So maybe for walled settlements, towers do actually get factored into the calculation, which I figured they wouldn't. Anyway, after all this, 
I was able to peace out with Liu Biao. He's obviously in trouble, having lost three territories to us, and the Yellow Turbans are giving him a hard time as well. So we can quit that war. Now we've got a few Yellow Turbans of our own to deal with by the looks of things. And then we'll turn back and walk to the Shishu front once again, and try to focus him down. Obviously, I'd like to do the same thing with my southern army, but I'm going to try and finish off this Chupan thing as quickly as possible. We can't quite attack them this turn, so we just leave an ambush outside their door and we'll come back to that. King Mulu finishes off the guys he has under siege, taking big casualties again, presumably two towers attacks being calculated into the Order of Resolve. Pretty nasty, but... We only need three turns to get back to full strength, and it's going to take us at least three turns to walk to the front line from here, especially because we have to spend one turn sitting right here for now. So we should be back to full strength before we have to use it again, so that's okay. Next, Wutugu gets us into yet another war. Not sure why everybody's declaring war on this guy instead of me, but we're now at war with Taoying, so we'll see if anything comes off that. Now, once it's our turn again, I wanted to move out to get rid of this yellow turban force. And I thought, well, we just ought to resolve them, but apparently that's going to be a crushing defeat. So now more auto resolve antics for us to deal with. The balance bar is great. The result's looking terrible. Our army is in bad condition because they actually besieged us. They got zero turn attrition and we missed a turn of replenishment, meaning our army's looking kind of trashed right now. So basically, we can't auto resolve this, so I do go on to fight it manually. Not much to say about the fight. You can see on the balance bar that we don't really have to do anything. They just run at us, route instantly because they just had the lowest of the low when it comes to trash for their melee stuff. And then we run forwards and we'll charge through and attack the range stuff as well. That should be fine. We also had two duels going on. In both cases, we started with really low health, but our stats were so much higher that we beat them up, even without weapons as usual. Sort of getting weird that they haven't fixed this yet. Maybe it just can't be fixed for existing save files. So we go on, unarmed, into a victory. We need to kill them again after that. And one more order resolve and the rebellion is over. So we finally ended whatever Liu Biao's problem was around here. Now we'll take over. The city's in terrible condition and we need to replace all the buildings with Nanman style ones. So not much going to be happening there for a while. Now in the corner of the map, we finally arrive to attack this Chupan faction. Not much going on here, so we're just going to auto resolve them and take the win and replenish option. We do lose a bunch of troops, but we're only one or two turns away from getting them all back, so basically it doesn't matter, we save ourselves the bother, and obviously it's going to take us many turns to walk back from that location, so we'll see our southern army again at some point. Mulu is starting to walk towards the new Shishu front. We need to build up his army a bit more as well. We've got some income space, so we can get a full stack going, ready to face off against the at least one full stack we know the enemy have. As for Meng Yu, we're going to make a run north now with her to go for the Jiameng Pass, which has fallen to the Yellow Turbans, a nice strategic location. We can take it off the Yellow Turbans and then control said pass. That would be nice, so we're going to do that in the background. Meanwhile, the main force under Shamaka is moving up to help with Shishu, and we've skipped a couple of turns here because basically nothing happened. I just kept gradually walking towards him. He didn't make any further attacks, and here we are. We can see he's sitting in our capital with a full army. I'm going to put both of my armies in ambush positions nearby. Again, nothing happens after that, so we just go on in, and we can attack this guy. We can get a Pyrrhic victory attacking with just Shamuka. Maybe that's only from the glitch that I mentioned, but we can upgrade the Pyrrhic victory to a decisive victory by using Mulu at the same time. With that result, I thought, well, we could just take that right now. No need to beat around the bush, again, because we'll take a bunch of casualties, but they'll come back over the next couple of turns, since we're going to have to walk for a while to do anything after this. So there we go, we've got our capital back, that's going to be good for the economy. I think you lose your trade routes or something when you lose your capital. There's some kind of consequence that just isn't very uh, telegraphed in the game, where your capital does matter to some extent to your trade network. I think your capital gets moved somewhere else after one turn, so I don't know where it is now. But anyway, we can carry on from there to go and take back the rest of Wuling. Then here we have this offer. From Yang Feng, he wants to declare war on the Han Empire in general, the sort of imperial faction that we haven't really seen much of. They've probably already been cut down to size by all the other factions. 
Decided to say yes because even though this is a bad idea, I thought, well, let's just go along with it. If Yang Feng wants to declare war on these guys we can't see, then fine, we're at war with someone else now. We'll see if anything happens. Now in the south, our army from the Chuban thing is now back, and we can start thinking about attacking Xi Xie. However, his capital is a walled city with a big garrison and an actual army inside it. Not too much we can do against that, so I just set an ambush outside to see if anything would happen. As for Shamuka, I'm going to send him north now because the yellow turbans are doing a number on Liu Biao at the moment. He's lost a couple more territories to them. So I figured let's swoop in and take these things. I wanted to eventually go back to war with Liu Biao, but with those yellow turban places taken, we'll be almost in a position to defeat him instantly. However, then this happens. We've got some big changes around here, courtesy of our old friend Wu Tegu. He's at it again. It seems what's happening is that Ying Xiao, one of Sun Tzu's vassals, declared war on Wu Tegu, our vassal for some reason, despite them being on the other side of the map from each other. And this means that the vassal masters are now being forced to go to war. So me and Sun Tzu are going to go at it, and that's going to be a big deal because, as mentioned, he is the gigantic faction next door. So that's probably going to be our main focus from here. We need to do something about this war. Plus, Xi Xu and Ying Xiao in the south, his vassals will be involved. So we're pretty much now at war along our entire eastern border. We're not going to have enough armies to keep all parts of the border secure. So this is going to be a bit of a dangerous one. Ideally, Shamuka and Meng Yu could come back down and help, but they're so far away that I didn't bother. I thought, let's just keep going with the projects we already set up. We'll take down these yellow turban places and then maybe turn around. It depends what happens, really. At least at Jamung Pass, the army that was defending it is gone by the time we arrive. So that's handy. We can get a free order resolve and move on in. These passes are a new addition to the game. They're like the ones in Warhammer, where it's just a one region province, a one county province, I think they're called in this game. Basically, it'll place on its own. It's a special settlement that just gives you some garrison. So we can upgrade it here from a terrible one to an okay one to have a decent, like, two-thirds army garrison sit there, which will help out if Matong decides to attack us or something up there. With the Xi Shi front, I decided rather than attacking his heavily defended location, I'll just ignore it and go for a nearby, perhaps less defended location. That should help out. Then at the start of the next turn, we get a new neighbor because Liu Biao has been confederated by Liu Bei. So now we have another one of the major factions moving on into the area. Not really sure how big Liu Bei is. We don't have much intel on him, but he's one of the major factions. He's similar in strength to us, according to that uh, little yellow notch next to his name there. So he probably has tons of territory if he has similar strength to us, since we have tons of territory. And now we have a little bit more because we take over that yellow turban mine in the mountains. There are some guys nearby we need to kill as well before Shemekat can move on. The place I wanted to attack, hoping it would be less defended than Shisha's capital, is defended by Shisha himself, as it turns out. And there's a two-thirds stack garrison, so I thought this could actually be a bit of a fight. But in the next turn, the army inside has moved out. I think he was killing some Yang Feng army that was standing over there. So while he's away, we'll sneak on in behind him and steal his settlement. Not the best auto resolve, but at this stage, we've got a bunch of techs and stuff that give us so much replenishment that we can virtually always take a bad auto resolve and be fine. For some reason, doing this causes this event back up at the Jiangmeng Pass where my attempts to upgrade it have been uh, put into peril. We can just throw some money at the situation and that will go away. Handy. Now, we do have an issue down here because the army that was defending Shisha's capital is moving out west to attack us, and of course because we've just shifted north to attack them, we can't defend against this, so unfortunately we're in trouble. Our garrisons here are quite bad, really depends what the enemy do, but they're certainly in a position to take territory. This would be a perfect time to get out of our war. I wanted to try again to see if we could end the alliance war with Xi Shi. I think it's going to be complicated now because Xi Shi is the vassal of Sun Tzu who we're also at war with. So at this stage, if I couldn't get out of the war before, we're probably not going to get out of it now. And essentially I couldn't find any way to actually talk to Xi Shi. There's no way to ask your alliance to propose the peace. 
I think I later discovered the only way to get out of an alliance war is if the other people in your alliance war want to end it. Then it will be possible to actually cancel it. But as it stands, you can't ask your allies to end the alliance war or negotiate without just destroying the alliance first or something. You can see I did an unprecedented move. I alt-tabbed out and actually read forums to try and work out what you're supposed to do here. And the consensus from the uh, Steam forums and from CA Zone forums was that it's probably a glitch or an oversight that you can't talk to people you're at alliance war with. People were just saying, please fix this CA, and all the threads just sort of ended earlier this year. So I don't know what's going on with that. Basically, the war will not end, which I think it wouldn't end anyway, even if I could negotiate. So in this case, probably doesn't make a difference, but some things going on there would have got out of the war much earlier if it had been possible, I think. As you can see, Mulu takes Wuling back, and from there, he can move on to attack Sun Tzu's territory, so might as well just keep going. Shamakai is going to waste some time, really. Kind of annoying, because this is our best army, and I've got it right in the middle of our territory, fighting the rebels. But if I don't take down these nearby troops, we might actually lose territory to them. They had a third of an army here who we've just killed. And then there's another two-thirds of an army in the river next door. So we just need to keep an eye on them. I think those are the guys that have just taken the Kuei Pass from Liu Biao. So they might go on and take something else or retake the territory we just took. We're going to have Meng Yue run south. It's going to take her like 10 turns to get anywhere close to the front lines. But might as well start running now and eventually she may be able to help. I'm also going to start a new army. This army is designed to block Shishu's expansion west. We're going to be giving up the uh, southern edge of the map essentially by only garrisoning this location. But it means we'll have time to build up before they can arrive. And combined with garrisons, we should be able to completely block their progress in that direction. So our defenses are shored up in that regard. We see two invasions coming in from Sun Tzu. One of them's just disappeared, so they're trying an ambush there near our Mao Xia army. And we saw Hong Gai coming in towards Wu Ling as well. And here is that Shisha attack that we essentially can't do anything about, so I'm just going to let them have this uh, territory. Annoying, but we may be able to take it back one day. What we need is for this army to come and attack the new army I'm making, die in a really good defensive battle, and then we'll counterattack. That's the overall plan. Shamoka is going to go for that Kuei Pass along the river because we can take it and then carry on down the river since that river goes into Sun Tzu's territory. So eventually we'll have a nice counterattack brewing. And that means it's going to be up to Meng Yue to keep an eye on that yellow turban army in our territory. She's getting close to it now. There's the Huang Gai invasion. The issue here is that we don't know which way he's going to go. If he goes south, that will be easier because he'll get close to King Mulu who was hidden down there. We're going to unhide him and bring him up. Well, I say unhide, I'm going to hide him again a bit closer to our territory because what we don't want is to make the AI go to the west by defending too obviously in the south. So we'll set an ambush there just outside of the enemy's movement range and see what happens with all that. And of course, we can't move out right here because we know there's an ambush on the road right outside since we saw the enemy setting it up. That means we can just sit around and defend, but overall we do have all of the various entrances into our territory in check, so it's not so bad, until our good, good friend Wu Tugu is at it again. He is bringing us into a war with Liu Bei, so that is just perfect. Well, I should say Liu Bei is declaring war on Wu Tugu for some reason. That always seems to be the way. Everybody hates this random small vassal in the middle of my territory. And this means that I have the option of abandoning him or going on to declare war on Liu Bei as well. And while abandoning him at this stage is probably the right thing to do, this guy has caused us so much trouble. He's screwing up everything and it's just getting worse and worse. We're going to join the war anyway, just for fun. So now we're at war along pretty much our entire border and we have nowhere near enough armies to block off all of the entrances into our territory. So we'll just see what happens. We might have a couple of turns to prepare if Liu Bei isn't ready to attack right away. But as you can see, Sun Tzu is putting more and more pressure on us, so it's not like there's anything we can do to prepare at this stage. So, from here, it looks like things are going to get serious. Join me for the next part to see how our omnidirectional war goes.